The user mentioned no fancy JavaScript or millennial garbage code. <laughs> For today's video, we're going to be taking a quick look at a new Nemotron model from NVIDIA. In this specific case, we're going to be looking at Llama 3.1 Nemotron Nano 4B V1.1. <laughs> now, this is a 4 billion parameter Nemotron model from NVIDIA, but there are a few cool things about this. Specifically, one, the context length is a maximum of 128K, which is quite large, and two, it is really easy to toggle reasoning on or off for this model. Now, you may have heard the Nemotron family of models mentioned before, and really, I suppose one could ask, well, what specifically like differentiates these family of models? And honestly, I think kind of the best way to just give a snippet of that is by just looking up the NVIDIA Llama Nemotron models and going to their website and they have really a simple paragraph right here about what these models are where they mention that it is a family of advanced models excelling in reasoning in a diverse set of agentic AI tasks. Now interestingly enough and what is very cool is that the models have the ability to turn reasoning capabilities on and off which they mention here can lower inference costs when tasks don't require deep thinking. So it is cool and I believe we are still starting to see more models where it is relatively easy to either turn on or off their reasoning capabilities, which as they say here, can lower costs when such a thing is not needed. Now, truthfully, we're not going to talk too much about the model card right here. We're just going to kind of get into vibe testing it and things like that. However, a couple of things I do find interesting here are the actual benchmarks. Now, normally I am very dismissive of benchmarks, not because I don't believe in them, but because I just like to play with the models and see how I like them, which is something the benchmarks won't really grasp is how a user will respond to a model. But what is interesting interesting right here is that the benchmarks are actually done in reasoning off and reasoning on mode. So this is kind of a way to measure the model's performance against itself, which then is a form of benchmark that I would be more apt to actually take a look at. And what we see right here is quite impressive where with the reasoning on, some of these benchmark numbers go up significantly, which is really quite interesting. So this means that whatever thinking functionality is going on in this model is definitely very much improving its overall output. Now in this model card, they do mention basically using this with VLLM and things like that. However, for today's video, and because I like using LM Studio for model testing because it just provides an aesthetically pleasing environment for us to actually look at the outputs of the model, I am opting to use the Bartowski GGUF of this model. However, I am using the 16-bit right here of the GGUF, and it is actually currently loaded into LM Studio. In terms of the settings and system that I'm running this on, we currently have the context length set to 52,880, which is quite large. I do not have the horsepower to bump this up all the way to the max context length, which would be quite cool, but I don't know how well I'd be able to even test that if I had the horsepower to run it. And the system that is running this is a mobile 5090. So it is a 5090 laptop GPU, which has 24 gigs of VRAM as opposed to the 32 on the desktop 5090. We can see right here, that with the model loaded with that setting of the 52,800 context length, as well as having OBS on and screen recording, I am using around 23 and a half gigs of video RAM, which is an obscene amount for a laptop. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, <laughs> you may notice that the power limit here looks very low. That's just something on Linux I need to figure out how to actually set it manually. I think this package can run 150 or 175 watts. So keep in mind that some of our token generation speed here will likely be slower than what it would be on Windows or something where all of the drivers are set up to allow the GPU to reach max performance. With that, in lieu of some of my normal testing, I actually went ahead to the Project Gutenberg website where you can see kind of uh, out of copyright books and things like that. And I copy pasted an extremely large part of the Great Gatsby in here, like uh, an extremely <laughs> large part. So, and then I asked it some questions about it and things like that. And truth be told, it kind of first and foremost just summarized the actual prompt uh, that I sent it, which is just a lot of parts of this book right here where you can see it thought for 60 seconds and it did take a while to actually process that prompt, of course, because it was a rather large amount of text that I inputted. And it kind of just got some interesting and 
proper things about this specific test. So I'm not going to too much go ahead and actually ask it things about the book because I tried doing that and truthfully my knowledge of The Great Gatsby is not high enough to really be able to on the fly say that's right or that's wrong. So with that I did just want to show this because it is pretty cool to be able to like paste a book <laughs> into the model and then ask it questions. Um, Perhaps for the students among us, that could be somewhat helpful, assuming the model doesn't hallucinate the answers, and then your teacher will probably be somewhat concerned at your um, capacities. With that, let's just move on and do like a, I want to do a Steve's PC HTML test. Now, I did mention this model can have reasoning enabled and disabled, so we'll do a few tests here with reasoning enabled, and then we'll swap over and change the sampling parameters to turn reasoning off. All right, so I threw a twist onto this where I just said, please generate an HTML website for Steve's PC repair. But <laughs> instead of just leaving it there, I said that the website needs to have hundreds of different customer testimonial stories of all types. So the model is thinking right here, which <laughs> I do want to see because we have so much context length here. If it actually outputs a ton of HTML with all of those little testimonial snippets in there, I can then ask it follow-up questions about what it makes, and we should ideally have enough context length for it to actually be able to handle making changes and things like that. So we'll see what happens here starting at 89 per hour. All right, well, for hundreds of testimonials, you'll need... Oh, okay. Well, no. I'm sorry, my friend, but that's not specifically what I asked. <laughs> All right, so I'm just now trying to persuade it to go ahead and just put these hundreds of testimonials within the HTML script. It is a bit tricky because generating 200 testimonials would be time consuming and might make the HTML very large. I had 199 more entries here. All right, I am getting frustrated now. <laughs> All right, so we've just kind of prompted it here to basically go ahead once more and just do this. <laughs> the user mentioned no fancy JavaScript or millennial garbage code. <laughs> I like how it, it either seemingly like just ignored or didn't mention that I seemingly became ang angry. So um, like capitalized letters are different tokens than the uncapitalized variation of said letter. So to what level the model understands that as anger, I suppose could be left up to one's interpretation, but all right. So this will be a little more simple. We're not going to get our 200 fake testimonials, which is quite frustrating, but I suppose we'll make do with what we have. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, uh, <laughs> All right, I mean, again, this is a 4 billion parameter model. So even though it is the 16-bit GGUF, it is still a 4 billion parameter model. It did a decent job. That button actually has like a hover effect right there. It is okay. The screen resolution on this laptop is a little weird, so I'm not going to necessarily blame it if things look a little odd. Latest updates, learn how to fix a corrupted Windows disk. This is interesting. So it almost put like a fake blog post here, which is not something I've actually seen too often. Uh, I don't know why it did that right there. That's okay. And then we have a send a message form stand out from the rest. Tech care repair hero image. So put image placeholders. So we're now going to go ahead and turn reasoning off here and then just see how some of the answers differ. Specifically, I am interested to see if it is more apt to just give me 200 fake testimonials now without the reasoning turned on because maybe it will think less and <laughs> just act more. So in order to actually go ahead and do that, as we can see here on the Hugging Face page, there are some suggestions depending on whether or not you have reasoning enabled. So currently, as I did have reasoning enabled, the temperature was set to 0.6 and top P was was set to 0.95. However, they recommend using greedy decoding for reasoning off mode. So basically what that means is in the model directory right here in LM Studio, which is how I'm using this, we are going to go into the settings of this model. And then from, sorry, right here, prompt, we are just going to turn detailed thinking off. And again, this may not be like the correct specific implementation of how to denote this as on or off, but this does work. So that's good. <laughs> and then for greedy decoding, Basically, that just means we're going to set the temperature right here to zero. And I did have some little notepad right here for that. Okay, so, and then it says put top P to one. Um, all right, so temperature to zero for greedy decoding uh, 
is the correct way to at least do it in this use case. So with that, we basically now will go ahead back into the chat pane and I am going to ask it once again to generate that website with 200 fake user testimonials only in HTML. So basically we're asking it and we can see first and foremost that thinking is turned off as it didn't think at all and just began to correctly or begin to immediately answer, I should say. All right, so it didn't necessarily, again, do it in the way that I wanted it to. So we'll just basically go ahead and try one more time to perhaps gently persuade it to do as we ask it to. All right, so we've just asked it in perhaps a more persuading manner where we need this or we're going to get fired and we won't be able to take care of our pet tortoise. So with that, it apologized for the misunderstanding, which is a good first step here in regaining my trust. All right, it is saying that it's going to now go ahead and generate 100 of these. And it's actually putting them in different subcategories. Windows PC repairs, I'm probably going to be the whole list. No, I'm just, and then uh, <laughs> Mac and Linux repairs, there should be far fewer there. Yep, all right, good. Uh, other devices and services. Smartwatch repair, Ooh, buy another one. Internet device rep router, router repair, business and corporate clients. So... All right, I give up on this test. It it at least kind of like tried here. I mean, this is a good like corporate business use case model because it's not going to do like BS stuff like this, which is good for a business use case, I suppose, depending on your sort of business. All right, I went back to Project Gutenberg because I do want to try it on long context just in the form of some book in the non-reasoning mode. So basically, I've come across this soap making manual, which I mean, this is actually kind of cool. It was written in the early 20th century, so this is actually kind of neat. And basically, again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy-paste a very large portion of this. That seems like a significantly large amount of text copied, so let's go ahead and just paste it in here. Now, I want to see how it responds to this just without me actually saying anything. So it's processing the prompt right here, and it is good that we did not overload our token limit, which, truthfully, I do not... 100% recall is 52,880. So I will check NVIDIA SMI right uh, right there. And we're, I saw a jump up right there to around 23 and a half gigs of video RAM. All right, we're almost ready to see our initial response to this large wall of text. In-depth guide on raw materials, manufacturing processes, analysis method, equipment, and classification of soaps for various uses. Emphasis is placed on practical aspects. Actual images are not included, but they are described. It includes authentic formulas for soap making, written in 1922, regional differences of types of soap material, specialized sections, classification of soaps, challenges of time. All right. I mean, this seemingly did a pretty decent job, especially for a 4 billion parameter model, just ingesting an extremely large amount. And look at that. The context is 98.7% full. So we basically have maxed this context length, which is in and of itself quite large. And this will do 128. So this will do double that. <laughs> Not bad. Suggestions for further reading. Again, I don't, let's, you know, let's just go ahead and, and fact check one of these at least before I go ahead and give this praise for its performance here. Okay, so maybe the author's wrong, but the book name's right, so I'll accept this. This is not bad. <laughs> Something I do actually want to give a quick demonstration of is just how some of this can be done. So basically they say if you want to actually go ahead and run these benchmarks, just make sure you use this user prompt template and we'll basically... <laughs> That seems straightforward. Let me make sure I think about it correctly. All right, obviously this will go ahead and correctly get the answer here. All right, and it did produce that in the kind of manner that was denoted it should right here. All right, so that is probably going to conclude the testing for this model. Again, this is definitely more of a functional use implementation model. And what I mean by that is perhaps not necessarily the type of thing that perfectly fits into my form of testing. However, this is cool and I have not tested a Nemotron model in a video before, so this is exciting and cool to see. The long context is definitely a lot of fun to play with, assuming you have the horsepower to actually go ahead and bump it up to a reasonable level. The model is definitely kind of funny in a stubborn way. It almost reminds me of like a stubborn breed of dog in its refusal to just generate the 200 individual testimonials 
testimonials and things of that sort. However, it is really cool. I mean, they do talk a bunch more here about like tool calling support and more agentic things and stuff like that. I would like to show some of that stuff, but one, I am not using this with VLLM here, and I'm not entirely sure how to implement that all in LM Studio or how well that would work. With that, <laughs> this model is really cool. The long context is awesome, and I'm happy to be able to test a Nemotron on camera. So with that, that is going to wrap today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.